How would you say friendship has impacted your life? Huh, amazingly. Um, you know, I've always just kind of thought I would be maybe more like in the background um, in the congregation. Uh, I never really truly thought I would be one that would be helping serve as much as I do now. Um, but through the preaching, through the word, and through just the, like, I kind of like want to say it's like putting the, putting the foot down, like uh, driving the nail from Jesse and, and, and Avery and you, um, I would just say like that's kind of really made me like be like, hey, you like, can't just sit here in the background and just come and get fed every day and then just leave, you know, like you got to feed into people too. Uh, in tremendous ways, um, uh, I, you know, I'm 23 and I know there's a lot of guys my age that uh, they quit going to church a long time ago. Um, and because of the leadership that has poured into me, um, I, I've been able to really strongly grow in my faith. I didn't know that a church family could be like this, you know? Um, how um, willing people are to step up and help in any way. Um, just the love you feel just walking, you know, by a church member in the hallway, like, I, you know, hugely. They are my second family. Well, I love friendship. I love the people. I love the, all the pastors and everybody. Um, I've got some friends here that, I, of course, I'll have the rest of my life. And um, my church is my family because I don't have family here. I have John and uh, two grandkids and the rest of my family, brothers and sisters, and everybody's in Tennessee. So um, I don't have relatives here. So my church is my family. I'm so thankful for that journey that we see where we're at now, planning anybody, and I'm not saying anybody does, but anybody, you can have questions about what we're planning here, uh, but if anybody has any doubts, I wish they could go back a little bit. You know, like, like the Christmas Carol, go back a little bit with Scrooge and let me show you around here. But buddy, there is, you hear it, there is a mission field right here around Friendship, Southern Baptist. It's not Easter yet, but this church is already making baskets for health care workers on the front lines in the fight against the coronavirus. Doing, we're getting ready for social distance vacation Bible school. Week number two here in St. Andrews neighborhood of Concord, North Carolina. 117 Peachtree Avenue in Concord, North Carolina, Baptist Sharon House. So uh, hope to see you guys come out. Uh, even come out and fellowship with us just for a little bit and uh, we can help engage in the community here in Concord and share the gospel, share the love of Christ. That's what it's all about. I believe that Jesus died on the cross as the ultimate sacrifice for my sins. I believe in Jesus Christ because he's the one that saved my life. No matter what I've gone through in my life, Jesus was the one that was always there for me and has always kept me. No matter what darkness I've been through, Jesus has always been the light of my life. I'm getting baptized because I want to show my full commitment to Christ and to follow no one else but Him. Based on your profession of faith in Christ as your Lord and your Savior and your decision to follow Him in public baptism, we baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, lowered into death with Christ, raised to new life in Him. Amen. Hey guys, uh, here I am in the place we gather every Sunday. We gathered here since about 2001. And we're at this point in the life of our church right now called the Kingdom Legacy Campaign. And the question is, what kind of legacy are we going to leave, are you going to leave for the kingdom? What kind of legacy is the generation 50 years from now going to remember that this generation right now sacrificially, joyfully dedicated their lives to, to see the gospel spread in our community for generations to come. That's the vision of the Kingdom Legacy Campaign. And there's four primary areas that we need to work on. First and foremost, we want to expand the fellowship hall, the kitchen facilities, 
because the church in the book of Acts, we've seen the church got together regularly. They ate together. They took the Lord's Supper together. They fellowshiped together. And uh, we want a space where the whole church can do that. I mean, we're talking, we have over 300 members. If everybody shows up, we don't have a space for it. So we want to expand that facility. And on the back, we want the youth, uh, the youth ministry wing to be on the back of that so the youth can be all in the same area as the ministries. Secondly, we want to expand the foyer because the foyer is small and cramped. And there's literally hundreds of people every week that come and go. And it's hard to connect with people in the foyer. A lot of people go out other doors of the church. And so we want to expand the foyer 500% larger. Thirdly, is we want a dedicated children's wing because we have over 50 children in our church right now, which is incredible. Praise the Lord. So we want a place that they have that's just their own. And then fourthly and finally, we want to expand the sanctuary space so that for generations to come, we can grow, gather, and train up and send out pastors, leaders, and missionaries who will plant churches that multiply. We believe that with God's help, we can accomplish this. Through this campaign, it's your turn to give. And we're asking you to give sacrificially, cheerfully, and joyfully to the Kingdom Legacy Campaign.